Welcome back everyone, this time I am going to talk about the glimpses of the heavenly mountains that Jesus showed me. God is a God of mountains, they are of significant importance to God. I will mention a few of them. At Mount Sinai, Moses received the Ten Commandments, a symbol of God's covenant with Israel. Exodus 20, 1-17 Mount Zion, this area was captured by King David, and it became the city of David, and the location of Solomon's temple. 2 Samuel 5, 6-9 Jesus prayed on the Mount of Olives, prior to his arrest and crucifixion. Later he ascends to heaven from here. Luke 24, 50-53 And the Mount of Transfiguration Mount Tabor, where before the disciples' eyes Jesus is transfigured, and appearing as he would after his resurrection, and standing next to him were Moses and Elijah. Matthew 17, 1-9 I glimpsed three huge mountain peaks. They were arranged in a triangle formation, with a mountain on each corner. Each one looked different from the other. The first mountain I visited was covered with snow. Earthly snow is only a shadow of its heavenly counterpart. Instead of our cold, wet and frozen snow crystals, God created the snow in heaven out of diamond snow crystals, these are glorious. They have no sharp edges, the snow that they create is very soft. The light of God reflects off it in multicolored rainbows. You can make snowballs, snowmen, or snow caves. It has all the qualities and similar characteristics that we would expect of snow, yet it is very different and more glorious. It is not cold, but the snow feels wet in your hands. When you let go of it, your hands are instantly dry. It is permanent snow. It is snowing occasionally, by direct order from the throne of God. The snowflakes instantly smooth out any indentation that was left behind by people and animals, but they do not add to the thickness of the snow. The snow always stays beautiful. People in heaven have no need for safety helmets and insulating warm winter clothing and gloves to keep warm. Even though these mountains are higher than the highest mountain on earth. Yet the temperature is always pleasant and perfect. I know, I have seen it. The snow is one of the wonderful creations of God, it is associated with the blood of Jesus. He said, My blood washes white as snow, this snow is now a symbol of the redemption, the most highly revered and esteemed event that has ever happened throughout eternity. Therefore it is holy, highly favored and honored. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Isaiah 1 verse 18 Jesus loves the snowy mountains, and visits there regularly. He arrives in a golden sled, pulled by white reindeers, these have golden antlers. He is when Jesus arrives then all of creation shouts out in praise and worship. And the mountain itself is very honored to be robed with this snow, it bows down and worships Jesus. The mountains are wonderful and indescribably awesome, they go way beyond our comprehension. It is such a majestic place. There is a variety of snow animals living on and around the mountain. Jesus introduced me to the beautiful, snow squirrels, they came in a variety of colors, but most were a beautiful sky blue. I saw a group of them standing near the bottom of a golden chestnut tree, they were singing beautiful songs to Jesus. That choir was my welcoming committee to the snow. One of them stood out from the others, he was dressed in white, with top hat, bow tie, and walking stick. The latter he first used as a baton, to lead the choir. But at the next song, he put it down, and produced some sort of musical instrument, 
that he played very skillfully. After the choir had finished singing, he welcomed me, he said. How do you do? I am pleased to meet you. Welcome to the holy snow. Lifting his little top hat as a greeting gesture. My name is Squire. I am the squire of the choir. He said in good humor. I asked him about the musical instrument. It resembled a Javanese percussion instrument, but with golden chestnuts. He called it a chestnut cello. He said, We make these cellos ourselves. I am going to collect chestnuts from that tree to make more chestnut cellos. He presented a cello to me, but I could not accept it. I had to return to Earth. He said, Well, then I give you one when you come back here permanently. We talked some more and said goodbye. Looking back, he had put his walking stick against the tree trunk and was running up and down that chestnut tree, collecting golden chestnuts, while the choir sang more beautiful songs. They look very cute. Jesus said, There is a parallel similarity between earth and heaven. Just like there are the seven wonders of the world on earth, so are there the seven wonderfuls of heaven. The holy snow is one of the seven wonderfuls of heaven. Jesus said, The seven wonders of the world are nothing compared to the seven wonderfuls in heaven. Then the Lord showed me a glimpse of one of the ski lifts. These look similar to the ones on earth, but are more glorious, and they do not have wooden or plastic seats. Instead they have soft red velvet cushions to sit on. The angels manufacture these by stuffing them with feather downing from their wings, for they do lose their small downing feathers, and these are collected and used to make cushions. Jesus said, I want you to know that we recycle everything up here, there is no waste. These seat cushions are so soft and comfortable, they reshape and fit around you when you sit down on them. The snow displays an amazingness of colors, there are rainbows reflecting off it, and they swirl and move, and in their movements you hear the snow singing, for everything is alive in heaven, so also the snow. It knows that it represents the redemption, and that it is highly favored. I heard it play many melodious tunes about the blood of Jesus. They permeate your very soul with hymns of joy and praise, and you will feel at absolute rest and peace. The name of this mountain that we were ascending is Mount Heaven's Rest. Mount Heaven's Rest has a parallel counterpart on Earth, it is Mount Everest, but actually it is a very poor reflection. Jesus said, on earth some people literally die to get up Mount Everest, but up here people go up Mount Heaven's rest for fun, rest and relaxation. Arriving at the summit, you hop off the lift, and just breathe in the breath of God, and you take out your flag, and you place it on the peak of your salvation. There are flags of those gone before you, and you enjoy the restful glorious peace. In the midst of the musical snow melodies that are surrounding you, while you are taking in the magnificent heavenly views, and you have achieved your goal. Now you can take a connecting heaven lift to the other different mountain summits, or join in the snow activities of Mount Heaven's Rest. I saw people not only on skis, but also on sledges and snowboards. I saw Olympic size ski jumps and bobsled tunnels and runs.
people were also making snowballs and rolling them down the hill. The snowballs accumulated more snow. When they reached a certain size, they pop open. The sound of the pieces of snow falling down was the most beautiful sound of chiming crystals. I also saw angels with vendor trays, walking around handing out refreshments and other items. These angels are actually called, snow angels. You can descend the mountain in any way you like, it's all fun. I have seen skiing people jumping off high cliffs, fly through the air for a while, then somersaulting and dropping from a height on the snow. Just for fun, for it is so soft and beautiful. We cannot get injured in heaven. After Mount Heaven's rest, we visited the second mountain, Rocky Mountain. There is no snow on this mountain. I was standing on its enormous summit. From this height I saw more amazing captivating views, of many heavenly cities and large parts of heaven. Still realizing that Jesus only showed me tiny glimpses. In the center of the three mountains, I saw eagles soaring on high. There were couples, male and female birds, and they were demonstrating their earthly mating ritual where they would grab each other's talons, they dance and do somersaults, and spiral free falling towards the ground together, separating only at the very last moment. Then they flew up and joined the others. Even though it is an earthly thing, they do demonstrate it in heaven, it is something they keep. It is an eagle way. The beautiful thing of the eagles was their singing, their choruses sounded so magnificent and angelic. The rocks of this mountain, are not at all rough and dirty as earthly mountain rocks, but more like cut and polished gemstones. There were many, many colors emanating from them, jade, sapphire, jasper, etc. The reflections of the rocks, together with the heavenly light, produces a, hard to describe, waterfall of incredible colorful light beams. An enormous magnificent light show in the sky. The eagles were flying in and out of it, the words I kept seeing were, an array of splendor. And the beautiful choruses that the eagles were singing, echoed from the mountains. The accompanying music reminded me of the sound of steel drums. It was too beautiful to describe, but it was a rocking rhythm. At the same time I saw people, rock climbing, ascending the mountain face, higher and higher towards this eagle show. They love to climb these mountains. And some of the eagles would stop, and deliver things to them, I saw them handing out drinks and food. And they were having a talk and giggle with the climbers. For the climbers it was a day out, like a picnic in the Rockies. Then I saw the climbers who climbed high enough for it join in the eagle chorus. The higher they climbed, the higher the intensity of the chorus became. They were singing along with the rock eagles, that was the real desire and reason why they went climbing, to sing and rock with the eagles, up Eagle Rock Mountain. I looked up at the heavenly sky and there seems to be what I will call, glory lights. They are all emanating from the throne. That is why there is no night in heaven. Then I noticed some clouds, not normal clouds, but beautiful glory clouds. This is the only way I can describe them. These glory clouds descended down, thereby covering the mountain tops, they were emitting beautiful music that resembled high-pitched ringing cymbals. 
They were in perfect harmony with the Jamaican steel drum melodies and the eagle choruses that were already sounding and echoing all around us. In the meantime the mountain climbers who had reached the top, lifted up their arms and began to call out, and to fully join the eagle choruses and unimaginable beautiful music. It was literally a glorious musical worship show in the air, in the high rocky mountains, it is called, the Eagle Call. It is nothing short of magnificent, beyond our mind's comprehension. There is nothing like it. This place belongs to the Eagles, this is how they worship the Lord. People want to go there and visit, to be part of this display of worship. When up there, I also saw two eagle chicks sitting in a plush feathered eagle's nest on a ledge. And they were giggling, they looked so beautiful. They had white, fluffy sparkling diamond feathers. They resembled fluff balls with two eyes. These babies were trying to join in with their parents singing. The beauty of it was that I knew that they were going to grow up in heaven, and that they never would be harmed that they were being trained to sing the eagle choruses, and that they would never die. Jesus told me, that there is a special bond between a man and an eagle. God has a very special bond with his eagles. When I get to heaven, I am going back there, where the eagles sing, where they fly on high with the glory clouds, and meet these, by then grown up, chicks. God has shown us what the eagles do, but to go to their places of worship, was just splendid. Everything in heaven worships Father God. Then we went to the third mountain that the Lord allowed me a glimpse of. No snow on this mountain either. But the first thing I noticed was a very long playground style slide. Adults and children are going to the top of this mountain, then jump on this slide, and slide all the way down, spiraling around this huge mountain. It is fun, it is magnificent. I said to the Lord, this is just marvelous. Jesus laughed and said, Yes, this is heaven's raw sort, and if you are coming down this whole slide, you can hear my voice. You do not need earphones up here to hear me speak. I will always speak. My word will never pass away. At the bottom of the mountain, there is a long straight section, then at the end you fall into an ocean, then you hear the ocean waves roaring. They roar because the ocean is participating in the fun and laughter and joy of the people that are coming down. And it delights in the fact that the Lord's redeemed people splash in its water. This ocean is contained in a lagoon, but so large that I could not see the other side. I saw sailboats on the water. At the raw sort I had a glimpse of traditional Earth Day, where Jesus preserved all the peace, fun and goodness of traditional earthly things and where all creatures live in harmony. This is where you can have a mixture of fun, 
I saw wolves, foxes, bunnies, squirrels, raccoons, and heavenly guinea pigs, but guinea pigs have a different name in heaven. I saw ferrets, they were running up and down people's arms, and tickled them, they were beautiful. I saw lions there, because people are drawn to lions, like they are drawn to eagles and other animals. There are certain animals that have this favor. The lions were giving lion rides, and they were showing off. They said, We are king of the jungle for one day, and we are the kings of this mountain for one day. They were entertaining us. The smaller animals at the resort were showing the visitors their earthly traditions. For example, I saw the squirrels again, running up and down a chestnut tree, they stood eating a chestnut in front of me, and they offered me one, and asked. Would you like a chestnut? We crack one open for you. Not that you needed them to be cracked open, the squirrels were being traditional. So also the ducks, and they swam quacking around the pond. They kept saying, Throw us some bread, throw us some bread. We were laughing, because we knew they did not need that bread, they said. We are being ducks today. So we threw them bread, and they swam quacking around the pond, having fun and made ripples in the water. The ripples emanated beautiful colors and melodies. The people visiting, wanted tradition, that is what they came for. But all traditional earthly things have an heavenly peacefulness to them. The traditional animal section is also a big attraction. Traditional Earth Day also has a joyful atmosphere. I saw angels juggling 20 or 50 juggling pins at the same time. I saw shops and festive colorful market stalls with angels as stall holders. They gave out food. I saw donuts. They are always oven warm. They come in a white paper bag as they do on Earth. God kept much of our natural, in the supernatural. I saw people walking around with milkshake cups. But these milkshake cups were not made of recyclable cardboard, but silver or gold. When the silver cup is empty, you have to go for a refill. But the gold cup keeps on automatically refilling itself. People were walking around with ice creams. I saw some cones that were a foot high. But it does not melt while it is not being eaten. I again saw angels walking around with full vendor trays in front of them. Giving out food or souvenirs, and other items like beautiful things that they made from feathers. And people can take all these things back to their own mansions as souvenirs. The angels love to serve and participate in the joy of the redeemed. I like hand fans, so I received one, made of angels' feathers. I did not need it, but it was beautiful. When I used it, it emitted beautiful melodies, a sweet sound in my ear. When looking down on one side of this mountain, I saw the slide, but also this transparent half dome, I remember looking at it. It was made of glass of some kind. It looked like a big diamond, I was really drawn to it and wondered what it was. I noticed quite a few of them sticking out of the mountain face. And Jesus said, This is a holiday raw sort, you can actually stay here for a while. I realized that those glass domes were windows of rooms where you can stay and rest. There is no night in heaven, but you still rest. To reach those rooms, one has to walk down a spiral staircase that is carved out of the steep rock face. It is fun, you cannot fall off, and there is no fear of heights. People in heaven, after they have finished their work, go to the mountains on holidays, or as they call it, holy days. From those rooms you can see all the fun activities that were happening on each mountain, the skiers on the slopes of the snow mountain, the eagles soaring and singing at the rocky mountains, and much more. My friends, I want you to understand that these three mountains alone are enormous, they are limitless. I only saw a small slice of each one of them, 
I know that there are incomprehensible more things to do and see on them. And I also know that there are more mountains similar like them. There is so much more and more, and eternally more to look forward to. It is totally beyond our human comprehension. If you like to experience the eternal joys in heaven, you have to be truly born again. The Lord Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3 verse 3 And I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14 verse 6 You must give your life completely to Christ. Yes, it is hard in this ever-darkening world. If you desire to be born again, or if you like to rededicate your life to him, say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe that you have shed your precious blood for me. I now repent and turn away from my sins. I want to give all my life to you Lord. All that I am, all that I have, and all that I do. I confess you now to be my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart and make me your child. In Jesus' name. Amen. You must give your life completely to Christ. Think about it. Eternity. Compared to our short time here on earth. Glorious eternity in heaven is worth fighting for. It will be the hardest fight of your life. A fight for your eternal soul. The Lord will help you. So be strong and courageous. Be of valor and might. I saw more portraits of God's generals in his picture gallery in heaven, namely Barry Smith, Lester Sumrall, and Drummond Tom. I am the last 